Hello guys, I am Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com and I am here with lesson number eight on how to be a successful engineer. And what we're going to talk about today is how to handle that dreaded lunch or dinner interview. Now I'll be talking primarily about lunch and dinner in the context of an interview, but a lot of this would also apply if you end up having to go on just a general business meal. Okay. Now most people this would not be a big deal for, but you're an engineer and this might be a big deal for you because engineers aren't like everyone else. You might be a little socially awkward. Okay, and the thought of having to sit down at a meal with someone and chit chat could be a very frightening thing. Don't worry, I've got you covered. We'll talk about how to get through that most frightening entity known as a lunch or dinner interview. And the way this happens is, is that you might interview for a job with a campus recruiter or with a recruiter for a company. And if they're impressed with you, if you kind of make it past the first hurdle, they might want to go to lunch with you. You need to be ready for that because it might even be on the same day that you have your job interview. If they, if they sense something about you that they want, they might want to take you out to eat and you got to be ready for it. And I'm not trying to make fun of you, but a lot of times uh, it's the introverts and the socially awkward people that become engineers. And so you've got to know how to make it through that, uh, that uh, meal interview without really messing it up. Okay. First thing that I'll say is, is that, uh, you know, when you're in the job interview, the official interview, a lot of times it's all business. It's like, you know, it's like bam, 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 all business. But sometimes when people eat, it can become a little bit more social. And I know this is scary to you, but it might be a little more social. You might need to be able to chit chat a little bit. Okay. And so it could be that chit chatting and a little social interaction isn't something that comes natural to you. That's okay. You're an engineer. You can learn. You can like look at rules and you can follow the rules. And so I'm going to give you some things to talk about. Okay. So what you need to do is, is that if chit chat doesn't come in normal, come normally to you and you want to avoid that, that awkward silence in a conversation before you go to lunch, come up with five things that you could talk about or five things that you could ask about and have those in your head, like memorize them. I'm going to talk about these five things. And if I feel that the conversation is getting awkward, that it's that awkward silence, these are five things that I could talk about. Think of a sentence. I would say this sentence and then kind of think about what your follow up would be. Okay. And, you know, first of all, I want you to think, and I can't answer this for you, but think about five things that you're interested in that are not technology, okay, that are not, uh, you know, uh, engineering related. Maybe you like to hike. Maybe you like to fish. Maybe you're a break, a break dancer. I don't know. But think of five things that are not technology related that you could talk about. Like, well, what do you like to do away from work? Well, you know, I really like to go ride my bicycle. Okay, that would be a good one. Ride your bicycle. But think of five things that you could talk about yourself that is not uh, uh, geeky or engineering related. So you're going to have five things about yourself that you would be able to say that would be meal appropriate that uh, that are not engineering related. Now, the other thing you need to do is you need to kind of have five questions that you could ask the other guy because you don't want to just be this geeky, hopeless, socially awkward nerd that you are. OK, you want to come across as a little more socially adept. Don't worry, I'm going to help you through this meal. Okay, five things about yourself that you could talk about that are meal appropriate. All right, besides that, I want you to think of five things that you could ask the other guy. All right, and this this is kind of a danger zone because you you know, it's it's like you got to be careful. Meal time, we tend to be a little more social, we tend to be a little more chit chatty, but you don't want to get off into that creepy zone. Okay, so you want to kind of get a little social, but you don't want to get over there where it kind of, you know, you make the person feel awkward or it feels a little bit cre creepy. Okay, so let's say that you're interviewing with HP. 
Let's say that you sort of impressed them. The boss wants to take you to lunch. You go out to lunch. You're terrified. What are you going to do? You're going to have five things about yourself that if it comes up, you could say something about yourself that wasn't work related. Okay, you're going to have back in the back of your mind five questions that you could ask the guy that you're going to lunch with. How about this one? Let's say we're interviewing with HP and the guy we're interviewing with is Joe. Or let's say that he's Mr. Burns because maybe at this point you should still be calling him Bur uh, Mr. So say, hey, uh, Mr. Burns, well, tell me, you know, we've talked a lot about all the things going on, but tell me, how did you end up at HP? How did you end up here? You seem to really like it. Tell me, how did you end up at HP? Not too much can go wrong there. You start asking about his wife. Maybe he's in the middle of a divorce. You ask about his kids. Maybe they got arrested last night for drug abuse. Okay, what's real safe? How did you end up at HP? That's social. That's personal. Not too much, not too many ways that that could go wrong. That's your question. How did you end up at HP? Okay. And we're in Palo Alto. This is HP Palo Alto. Okay. He answers blah, 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 blah. And the nice thing about you asking the question, it allows him to do more of the talking, less pressure on you. You see, if he asks you the question, you give your one sentence canned answer, and then you're out of stuff to say. You ask the question, maybe he'll blah, blah, blah a while. We're going to eat up this hour time, and it's going to be over before you know it, because people like to talk about themselves. Hey, Mr. Burns, how did you end up at HP? Okay, that's a great question. All right, we're in Palo Alto. He tells you all about how he ended up at HP. Well, man, you've been here a while. How do you like Palo Alto? Do you, are you here just because you love your job? Or how is it to live in Palo Alto? Not too much can go wrong there. If he doesn't like it, he can tell you why, you know, the crazy thing here or there, but it's not so personal that you're hitting a, hitting a nerve. How is it to live in Palo Alto? Not too much that can go wrong there. Okay. How about this? This is a pretty safe one too, a little bit social. How about your weekends? What do you do on the, you know, what do you do on the weekends? How do you unwind, you know, after you're, uh, after you're not at work? His chance to tell you that he's really, you know, what he really loves is he really loves, uh, you know, I don't know, whatever peculiar little hobby he has, he has a chance to tell you about it. Not too much can go wrong there. What he enjoys doing, what his hobbies are. Okay. So, uh, uh, Okay, how about this? Wow, you know, it sounds like you really like it here. What is it about your job you like the best? What is it that is the best thing about working at HP? You see, not too much can go wrong there. And then uh, you could say, hey, how about, how does it work kind of socially? Are most of your friends, like away from work, are most of your friends the people that you work with? Or when you are doing things away from work, you really like to get away from them. How does that work? You mainly people from work that you're friends with or mainly people not at work? You see, there's five questions I gave you. If you sort of ask those questions, that would fill up a lot of that chit chat time with minimum pressure on you. Same time you think, Similar questions that were asked to you, how would you answer them? You see, you can go back and forth with this social banter and take the pressure off because you're a socially awkward person, because most engineers are. Okay, so first thing of dealing with a uh, mealtime job interview is to be able to chit chat. You do that if it doesn't come naturally by going in there with pre planned things that you could ask or pre planned things that you could talk about. Second thing, ordering. What you order is important and you can really mess things up if you're not careful because everybody knows that you're going to be socially awkward but you probably don't want them to know just how socially awkward you really are. You've got to kind of cover that aspect of things. So I'm going to help you order. Number one, don't order based on what you like and what you would really enjoy eating. Order on, on, based on something that couldn't go wrong. Because a lot of things you order, there's so many things that could go wrong. So, so first of all, don't order something that is messy. Okay, don't, like think about a Reuben sandwich. You know how a Reuben sandwich is this big and it's got all that goopy stuff in it and you eat it and it's going to get on your face and you're going to be there and you don't know that you've got this huge glob of Reuben sandwich on your face. So, so things like sandwiches and, and big sandwiches and, and goopy sandwiches just don't go there. Okay, how about ribs? You know, how about baby back ribs with barbecue sauce? Man, I tell you, 
that barbecue sauce is going to jump off of those ribs and it is going to jump on your white shirt. That white shirt you're wearing, that dress shirt you're wearing, that is going to be a barbecue sauce magnet. Okay, the barbecue sauce will jump off of those barbecue ribs and jump on your shirt. And when you go back for the rest of the interviews that afternoon, you're going to have a great big barbecue stain on your shirt. So you want to not order anything messy. You don't want to order anything messy. Okay, also understand that during this meal, he might be asking you a lot of questions. You might get into some of, maybe he was impressed with something you did in school and want to know more. And, and that's good stuff. That's stuff that you can talk about. That's stuff you'll be at ease talking about. But it might be, there might be three or four people from the company, and there might just be one of you. And it might end up that you have to do most of the talking. And again, it might not be social stuff. It might be stuff you're comfortable talking, uh, talking about. But understand, you might be doing most of the talking so you got to think you don't want to order a great big meal because you might have to do a lot of talking and then you look down and everybody else is finished with their meal and your meal is sitting there kind of untouched and then it's awkward leaving the food there so you want to order something that's not huge and something that you could imagine that you could sort of eat and talk at the same time and so uh Let's see, what would maybe be something good that to order? Okay, another thing, another don't. Don't order the most expensive thing on the menu. I, I was like, I took a guy out to dinner once, and you know what he ordered? The surf and turf. You know what that is? That is the lobster tail. He ordered the twin lobster tails with the uh, filet mignon. Do you know what a horrible, stupid thing that was to do to order the most expensive thing on the menu? Like, hey, hey, we're on the company dime, man. Go to town. No, don't order the most expensive thing. Also, don't order the cheapest thing. It's like, oh, look at me. You know, I'm going to have the crackers and soup and I'm going to have a glass of water. You know, don't do that. Don't don't be strange. You Well, you might be strange, but don't let them see how strange you might really, uh, really be during the during the meal interview. So so don't order the most expensive thing on the menu. Don't order the cheapest thing on the menu. Don't order something messy and don't order something big. What would be a safe thing? Like salads going a little bit too low end, I would say, how about if you got the salad with the sliced grilled chicken? Like if they had a nice little salad with sliced grilled chicken, man, grilled chicken, there's not much that can go wrong there that, that you can get it and it's easy to cut. You can put it in your mouth. You can eat it without it getting all over you. If heaven forbid that chicken jumped off the fork and, 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 and attacked your shirt, it's probably not going to leave a horrible stain on it. Grilled chicken on top of a light salad is a pretty safe thing to do. Okay, that would be my, uh, my rec uh, recommendation. Next recommendation, man, whatever you do, don't order alcohol. Even if one of the guys you're with orders alcohol, it could be a trick. It's better not to order alcohol. Okay, just, and you don't have to order water, like maybe order a nice coffee, like could I have a cappuccino with a little of this, you know, a little latte, something like that, a fancy coffee, a nice coffee, maybe a nice tea of some type. You see, don't be afraid to kind of enjoy the social aspect of things with people, but have a have like a fancy coffee or a tea. Don't go for alcohol. That could be a that could be a that could be a big big mistake. So okay, so we said don't order the most expensive, don't order the cheapest, right? <clears throat> There's stuff you might not know. Uh, there's stuff you might not know, and man, this is this is one you've got to know. Sometimes you're sitting at the table and everyone's around you, and you've got a glass to the right and a glass to the left, and they're both sort of equal distance from your plate, and like which is which. Man, the one thing you don't want to do in a mealtime job interview is drink out of the other guy's glass. Your glass is at your right hand, right? Your glass, even if you're left-handed, your glass is at your right hand. Drink that one. Be very, very careful. I have had people that I'm interviewing drink out of my glass. That is not good. Don't reach across the table accidentally and get the other guy's glass and drink out of it. Yours is at your right. Maybe set it even closer to your plate than they put it so you keep it close by so you make sure you only drink out of your glass don't drink out of the other guy's glass because you're an engineer and these are the types of things engineers do and it's okay that you do them you just don't want to do them during your job interview okay so your glass is at the right if you have multiple forks 
in multiple implements that you've never seen before, this is the way it works. It starts on the outside and you work your way in. So if they bring you a salad, you start with the outside fork. It'll be the small one, you use that. And then when they bring you the next meal, you use the next fork, okay? You always hold on to that fork. If you're gonna be ordering dessert, you hold on to it because uh, you might need to use your last fork for a, for a dessert if, uh, if it's a dinner and it gets, uh, gets to that point. All right, now also, it's important to sort of understand the norms of the culture that you're interviewing for a job in. And a lot of times there's things that are perfectly acceptable in other cultures, but let's say if you're in the Western culture in the United States or in Europe, there's things that might be acceptable in Asia. But if you're interviewing for a job in the United States, you don't wanna do them here. You wanna be sort of sensitive to the cultural norms of where you're interviewing. And so one of the things, I mean, there's a lot of things, but one of the kind of tips I would give you is that if in the United States or the Western world, you don't want to make noise when you're eating. And so things like slurping, you don't want to slurp your food. You want to kind of carefully put it in your mouth. You don't want to slurp it. And then also in the Western culture, we don't pick up like you wouldn't like pick up a plate and bring it to your face or you wouldn't pick up a bowl and bring it to your face or you wouldn't kind of slurp out of the bowl. And so you want to sort of be cognizant of just you know, you don't have to be like to the nth degree of etiquette, but like, like don't get anything on you. Don't make a noise while you're uh, eating. And most importantly, don't get something on the next guy over. I actually interviewed, uh, I, I was interviewing a guy and he not he didn't spill his food on himself. He spilled his food on me. Okay, that was a bad thing. It came all the way across the table and it got on my shirt. Okay, that was a that was a bad thing. We want to avoid that. So order something that's neat. Don't order something messy. Don't order something big. Your glass is on the right. If there's multiple instruments of eating, you start on the outside and work your way in as uh, as, as as things come in. Okay really and, and seriously think about things you don't want to just have dead air time you want to show that you can interact because when you are interacting in a job interview uh, at a meal you're showing that if if they need someone to send out to a business meal that they could send you to a business meal but if you go in there and you can't chit chat you can't have any social interaction and you don't know how to order and you spill your stuff and you sort of just really kind of crash and burn they might still hire you but it's like well we really couldn't we, we got to keep this guy away from customers we got to keep this guy away from outside people and if you just do these things even if they don't come natural to you if you'll just do what I tell you to do you, you you're an engineer you can learn just just do this like a math problem follow these instructions everything will be great you're gonna do fine don't worry. You're going to do fine. Just do what I told you to do. Okay, Paul McWhorter, toptechboy.com. I'm going to talk to you guys later.